guns are such a perfect issue uh, for a greater degree of federalism, right? I mean, dense urban areas are very, very, very different than rural areas and Alaska and the vast Western uh, regions in the United States. I mean, these cry out for different sets of laws. It might be entirely rational to say on a busy street in Manhattan, you know, let's not put it on every little cafe or bodega owner to say no guns and privatize this. You know, hey, maybe New York City wants to have a law that says you can't walk down Park Avenue with your Uzi strung over your back. You know, I, I mean, I think most people would say, okay, I kind of get that. But, but, you know, by contrast, the idea that you couldn't just throw a shotgun in the back of your pickup as you're driving around Alaska without having some permit or permission, uh, you know, people in Alaska say, oh, oh, come on, it's a shotgun. So regardless of the Second Amendment, we ought to have federalism when it comes to gun policy in the United States. 330 million people, vastly different regions, vastly different realities on the ground. So when we look at the Second Amendment itself, um, you know, obviously, I disagree with the incorporation doctrine. For example, you could have amended the First Amendment to say neither Congress nor the various states shall pass any law prohibiting da da da. Right. But they didn't do that. So there's arguments about the incorporation doctrine. I'm on the side of uh, Professor Brian McClanahan, Judge Napolitano, Tano, excuse me, uh, views that differently. Fine. Uh, but nonetheless, even under the Second Amendment construct, it, it's very simple. Our, our gun controlling friends have options. Now, amending the co Constitution is hard. It requires super majorities in the, the two branches of the federal legislature or among the states. Uh, okay, we all know the, the rules, the procedures for amending it, but they could amend the Constitution to say it's hereby repealed. They could amend the Second Amendment to say a well-regulated militia does not confer an individual right to possess firearms. They could amend the Second Amendment to say certain uh, weapons of war and then define those perhaps are, are not permitted. So they don't do these things because it's politically impossible to do so under the Second Amendment. I mean, just realistically, the, the process under the Constitution for, for amending the Constitution is difficult. It's a high burden, and I think it should be. So fine. Uh, nonetheless, a, a pretty healthy degree of federalism has been allowed and recognized by the Supreme Court. If we look at uh, gun laws across the 50 states, the, the famous Heller decision was based on a, a, a stricter gun law in the, the District of Columbia than existed in most places. And various states have toyed with their own assault right, rifle bans, their own background check mechanisms. So, you know, the idea that the Second Amendment completely federalized the issue is, is not the case, even if you accept uh, constitutional law as it stands. But, you know, the far more important element uh, in this d debate, which goes missing, in my opinion, is the case that Brian McClanahan makes so well, which is that the, the Second Amendment was it never conferred an ownership right on the American people. That's a natural right that preexisted um, the Second Amendment. Certainly in English common law, the people coming over from Europe understood this. So, so that even if you repealed the Second Amendment outright today, uh, arguably that, you know, people still have the right to own firearms. They just don't have a constitutional right. They have a natural right. So that's very important. But also, Professor McClanahan points out that really the Second Amendment was dealing with the national role in guns, which was to uh, permit firearm, firearm ownership at the individual level so that armies could be raised, if necessary, against foreign incursions uh, without the need for a standing army right, that the people would bear arms. And let me just read, uh, Brian McClanahan defines the militia was every man 18 to 45 or even older who could bear arms and defend the states, the state or the United States from foreign incursions. So it was never meant to raise national guards. It was never meant uh, to be, to provide for a federal apparatus in any case except for foreign incursions. So it was really an elaboration on the Article One, Section 8 powers of Congress um, in, in the federal power to deal with the, at that time, you know, very unlikely idea of, of uh, people rolling up in sailboats on the coast. But uh, all of this federalization, which conservatives, by the way, to their discredit, swallowed um, this idea that the Second Amendment nationalizes gun laws in America is just bunk. And, and it's also been very, very harmful 
Um, we should have different gun laws in the various states. And then maybe we wouldn't be at each other's throats. Maybe Californians and New Jerseyites could rest easy knowing that their governor or mayor was busy banning these weapons. And, you know, that redneck senator from Oklahoma or Alabama would have nothing to say about it. But both conservatives and liberals decided that they would federalize everything and jettison that healthy degree of federalism. So pox on both their houses.